Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Joe Van Cleve. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about my transition from video editing using an iOS device to using a Mac and also the uh, changes that I've experienced going from a PC to a Mac. Stay tuned, please. So first, some background information probably would be helpful to you guys. So I've been a long time PC user and my main personal computer, my Windows PC, was an old uh, XP-based uh, desktop box uh, that I had had for a decade or more. It was running like a dual-core Pentium processor. I didn't really use it for video editing, um, mainly because um, I didn't like any of the video editing programs available for Windows. They're either very expensive or they're cheap and bug-ridden. And the Windows platform at the time, at least the old computer I had, was kind of not really up to uh, handling it performance-wise. So um, I had uh, initially started doing videos a few years ago using an old iPad 2, but um, it was only a 16 gig iPad and there was some memory issues. Uh, you know, with only 16 gigs, uh, you really only have about eight or nine, practically speaking, to use, and it's barely enough room for all your footage. So about a year and a half ago, I got this iPod Touch. It's a 32 gig uh, memory, and I've been doing most of my videos on this iPod Touch. Um, so it's an interesting uh, platform. So this little iPod is actually basically an iPad. It's an iOS device. It just has a 16 by nine screen instead of the four by three screen of a real iPad. But other than that, it's, it's the same operating system, essentially a very similar kind of processor inside. And despite its small size, I discovered that these really do hit above their weight limit in terms of performance to cost. Um, and so I got used to using the iOS platform, but because my old Windows XP desktop computer was getting really old and I, needed, I knew it needed to be replaced, it was too old to upgrade to Windows 10. Um, and there were other reasons why I didn't want to use Windows 10 anyways. But anyway, so I wanted to get into a Mac because I like the, I like the iMovie uh, software running on this platform, this iOS platform. And I knew that uh, the iMovie for the Mac is more full featured. And I had heard a lot of stuff about how good Macs are and all that. And so um, I had no issues with Macs in terms of, you know, your flavor of choice, Windows or Mac. I, my only concern is a stable, well-designed operating system. Now, my hardware requirements for a, a replacement computer. I run a, an Epson flatbed scanner. Um, I have several external hard drives formatted for Windows that have gigabytes of photos and videos on them and other documents. Um, and of course, I I wanted to be able to use um, the iMovie software and have enough memory for longer projects than what this can do. Uh, and I wanted a stable operating system. So I picked up the a Mac Mini about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, I can't remember how long it's been. It's currently sitting underneath the uh, monitor. So it, I basically set the monitor right on top of the iPad, I, or the uh, Mac Mini. and. Uh, I really didn't have any problems starting with uh, using the operating system. It was pretty basic, uh, easy to understand. I had to just learn some of the different shortcuts and all that. But uh, there's some differences that I'm not really comfortable with. Like, for instance, one of the things that I noticed about the Mac operating system is the, um, what is it called, Finder, which is their version of Windows Explorer, your file explorer. One of the things I was uncomfortable with is that with Windows Explorer, you can open up the file structure of a drive into the subfolders. You can have a view of that. And then you can open up another drive on the right side and have the subfile folders for that. And then you can click, you can click and drag files from a subfolder of one drive directly into the subfolder of another drive. And it looks like you can't really do that, at least as far as I know, with Finder. Finder only shows you the drive. It doesn't show you the subfolders. It, it will show you the subfolders, but you can't have two views. You can't view the subfolders of two different drives simultaneously. And so I think what I was pretending, what I was messing around with was opening two different uh, Finder windows simultaneously. 
So you have to you have to open up two different copies of Finder and have one copy with the subfolders of one drive, the other copy with the subfolders of the other drive, and then drag them across the windows. Yeah, it was. You know, I, I didn't expect it to be that primitive. I, I expected the Mac to be better than that. Okay, the other issue I have is I have these external hard drives with a bunch of stuff on them. And although I can uh, read those drives and I can extract files from them and drag them into the Mac, I can't put anything the other way. So it's a one-way read-only system. Um, now, as far as the way the computer works, um, it's been pretty, pretty bug-free, pretty glitch-free. Um, one of the issues I had is when I had the and under the power saving features on the Mac, the the screen saver where like after 15 or 20 minutes it, uh, it goes into screen saver mode. Um, I noticed my mouse quit working. Uh, you can sort of wake it up by shaking the mouse, but then the mouse doesn't work, and you had to unplug the mouse. Say I'm using a wired mouse, not the Apple wireless thing, but you'd have to literally unplug it from the USB connector uh, on the back of the machine. <laughs> <laughs> every time you did it. So that was another bug. Uh, I didn't expect it to be that primitive. And so I ended up having to disable the screensaver completely. And what I do is I simply pow manually power off my monitor when I'm done using it. So the Mac stays alive all the time. The monitor is manually powered off. And I don't have any problems that way. But it is. it was a little bit of like, oh, this looks like Windows. This is like one of those buggy kind of things they never fixed in Windows, and I was really surprised that the Mac had that problem. Anyways, uh, so um, the video that I did yesterday uh, was episode 79 of the typewriter video series about the Underwood portable typewriter. And my lens cap is crooked. Hold on, that's bugging me. Okay. And... Uh, so I, I have set my GH3 camera to a 70 megabit per second bit rate, a higher quality video codec, just to experiment with the quality of it. And the files were huge. I ended up filling up my memory card um, with the raw footage, um, and I had to delete some unused clips and reshoot some. So I knew that was a mistake. But then when I went to do the video production, it took me like an hour almost to import the footage via USB cable, USB 3, from the camera to the Mac Mini. And that was surprisingly slow. I thought it should have been faster. And then the second thing was the, the, the uh, computer operated okay doing the video edit. But once I finalized the video, I finalized it. I had never done this before, but I finalized it as a finished production to the hard drive of the Mac. And I used a ProRes, which I'd never yet done before. And it was supposed to be a higher quality codec or whatever. Boy, it took forever. It took over an hour to finalize. And then the Mac got really buggy. It acted like a Windows 95 Windows computer where you get the uh, hard drive starts to get full. I mean, it was that bad. And I was really surprised because there's, there's nothing on this machine. I don't have any video files archived. It's just the bare operating system the way it was when I, when I first started using it a week and a half ago. So that was really disappointing. And then... Um, I went to try to upload that file to YouTube, and it, I left it for two hours, and it was still stuck on 1% done. And so I aborted it and deleted the ProRes finalized copy off the hard drive of the Mac, went back into iMovie, and re well, instead of finalizing a copy to the hard drive and then uploading from there, sharing it to YouTube from there. I went in to share it directly to YouTube from iMovie itself, not as a ProRes file, which is as, you know, 1080p. And uh, it took about three hours. A lot slower than this. And that was kind of disappointing. I didn't expect uh, this thing to outperform this thing. And that gets us on another topic. Now, if some of you are into photography, you might be aware of uh, Tony and Chelsea Northrup, who are a husband and wife couple who are professional photographers and run an educational kind of website and YouTube channel. And um, on a video that Tony Northrup did about a week or two ago, he was using a new uh, 
iPad Pro, a large iPad Pro. And he made an interesting observation that I'd like to share with you that kind of relates to this whole topic of iOS versus Mac versus Windows. His observation was he was using a version of Lightroom, which is a photo cataloging and organizational software for photography. He was using a version of Lightroom for the MacBook Pro, so it was an iOS app. And he compared the performance of that app on an iOS platform against both high performance Windows and a, and a Mac, a desktop kind of computers. And he says the, uh, the iPad Pro version of uh, Lightroom runs circles around both of the full-size computer versions of that software. And his opinion is it has to do with the basic operating system of both a PC and a Mac, all the overhead software that's built behind the scenes, and the fact that the coding for iOS is just so much more efficient and streamlined. And with the iPad Pro having a better hardware and um, more capable software, um, these new apps being written for that are really outperforming the full desktop systems. He was, he was using as an example, uh, scrolling through your full-size pictures in your, in your catalog. And in both his high-performance desktop PC and his Mac, you can't just scroll. You would have to sort of, next picture comes up and you wait for it to render, and then you the next one comes up and you wait for it to render. It's real slow and buggy on both of those systems. Whereas with his iPad Pro, he just was swiping it, swiping, 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 full-size full pictures coming up. So all of this is to say that, yeah, I'm happy with my, my Mac Mini. You know, it, it's, it's a better computer than what I had with my old, Windows XP box, but it's not as efficient as this. Um, if if the iOS platform would permit you to um, import a th plug a thumb drive into the connector and treat a thumb drive as a regular thumb drive, if you could transfer files back and forth, any kind of file. Uh, agnostic of whatever app it has to use. If you didn't have to use iTunes for transferring files, video and audio files to and from, and photos to and from this, the device, if you could do it directly from a USB dongle, those kind of things, if they could fix that, that connectivity issue, uh, these really would be the optimal platform for this kind of content creation because they're just, the operating system just coded so much more efficiently. So, Going forward, yeah, I'm going to continue using my Mac Mini. I'm happy I got it because the version of iMovie is more uh, capable. But that being said, it doesn't really replace this. This is really a great mobile platform if you're on the road, on a trip or whatever, or you just need to do a simple video and don't want to deal with the sitting down on a computer. These things really do work well. So that's kind of my initial observation. The Mac, the Mac is a little more buggy and a little less sophisticated than I thought it would be coming from Windows uh, compared to the fact that I've been an iOS user for many years now and I was expecting the Mac operating system to be as good as this and it really isn't in terms of bugginess. Anyway, that's my feelings. I don't want to start a flame war between Windows and Mac because they both use Intel processors. What does it matter anymore? Uh, you know. And there's virtual machines that you can run to on either one, or at least on the window on the Apple ones, you can run Windows in a virtual machine. Anyways, it's not this is not intended to be a flame war. I've used all three systems. I've used Windows, Mac, and iOS. Um, and I've even used Android tablets uh, for video. So uh, yeah, Mac Mini is an okay computer. It was a good deal. The cost of it was good, but it's not as efficient as this for basic stuff. It's more buggy. Okay, this is Joe Van Cleve. That's just an update on my behind the scenes tools of video production. Well, this is just an update a little bit for uh, kind of a post uh, script thought. But currently what I have is I have my Panasonic GH3 camera uploading these video files to my Mac. And I've opened up a finder view for the Panasonic camera 
and a finder view for the hard drive of the Mac and I'm transferring the files just I have the subfolders for each one open and I'm clicking and dragging the entire group of files right there over to the Mac so that's how you do uh, using the uh, finder view and transferring files from one drive's subfolders to another you have to use two different views two different windows so that's just my learning I have to learn that Secondly, my external hard drive is read-only because it was formatted for Windows. And so uh, there is a disk utility system I found in the settings of the Mac. It's just buried in there. And I can reformat one of my external hard drives for a Mac and then use the other Windows hard drive, transfer the files through the Mac and back to the reformatted drive. So I'm going to be doing that in the next few uh, days or weeks. So this is just learnings, uh, my learnings of how to use a Mac, and it's not... But, you know, there are still some buggy things that I mentioned earlier about the Mac that I wish was a little better. But I'm learning, and there it is. Until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.